What's going on Gato Squad? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Elias and if you are new here, consider subscribing if you want daily car content. Uh, today I'm actually going to be adding something new and exciting to the channel. Something I've kind of wanted to do for a while but I wasn't sure exactly how to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, and so we're going to be adding the news section to the channel. And now we must do the news. So about once a week or once every two weeks, I'm gonna to get together everything that's interesting to me and will probably be interesting to you guys and talk about you know what's coming up in the car world and the news and things like that and what's gonna affect us as enthusiasts going forward. So um, all, at the end, I'm gonna actually also do a little beer review. So if you're a beer drinker, stay all the way to the end. I'll, I'll pop open a, uh, a bottle of beer and I'll test it out. And I'll let you know how it is. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and have some fun and get started. All right, so uh, in this new segment, the news, like I said, I'm only going to be picking out things that I find interesting and I think you guys might find interesting, inter interesting in the car industry, in the car world, as car enthusiasts, whatever might affect us. So, um, you know, today we're going to keep it nice, nice, light and fun uh, because really that's all I found uh, interesting uh, this week. Uh, last couple of weeks so uh, let's start out with some type r news so today uh, there's some rumors going around that uh, the cheaper type r might be coming along and that's actually really cool let me wave by the, my neighbor <laughs> that's actually really cool because um if there's a cheaper type r coming that means the honda is serious about more type r variants so you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how uh, how good this rumor is. Uh, I found it on the truthaboutcars.com. Uh, somebody went through the NHTA NHTA safe uh, filings, and they saw that there's an extra uh, a lot uh, assortment of uh, Type R's coming. Uh, they compared the VIN numbers to for two different Type R's. This one uh, that's already here, and another one that's going to be coming out. So we don't know what that exactly means. You know, could it be a cheaper one? Could it be a more expensive one? Like I said, we don't really know. But the cool thing about that is that uh, it is a possibility. And what would that look like? So, you know, some people are saying that it could be a, a Type R without the wing, without the, uh, the wheels, you know, it would be like a simpler toned down Type R for car enthusiasts that are gonna be putting their own modifications to the Type R. I personally think that that Type R will have a lot less tech in it, so it won't have the, the cool screen, it won't have um, a lot of the features that this car has. So basically think of the Civic Hatch Sport and you know, look at the radio and the lights, the headlights and um, you know the, all the features that that has compared to the features that this has, I think that's how they're going to come out with it. So it'll probably cost around thirty to $32,000. Uh, we don't really know yet. I think this Type R's price is going up a little bit uh, next year. Not not by much, but a little bit. So to kind of uh, differentiate itself from the cheaper Type R. But like I said, it's all a rumor for now. Um, I just uh, can't wait to see what's going on with it. And uh, who knows, maybe if it's a lighter weight version of this car, maybe I'll trade this one in for, uh, for that lightweight version. You know, I've never really been a big fan of these, uh, uh, the radios and, and, and the features, the fancy features that the car has. I kind of wanted a more track oriented car and this cheaper Type R might be it. So keep tuned on that. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about, and uh, this this rumor has been going around for a long, long time, and every three to four months, you know, kind of resurfaces again and again. And it's something that's really close and dear to my heart, so I always follow it. And that's the Honda S2000 replacement. Um, there's a lot of rumors going around that the S2000 replacement could be coming. It's just over the horizon. You know, there's there's Hondas working on it, and uh, we're all excited for it. But you know, every time I get excited for it, uh, it never really materializes. It's been like this for the last, well, since S2000 has been continuous, since 2009. So it's been a quite a while since I've been waiting for a S2000 replacement. And, uh, you know, I guess I'll, I'll share with you guys what I would love to see in an uh, S2000 replacement. I want, actually, this engine in this Type R, just take this engine, Take the transmission, make sure it's not broken, <laughs> and uh, put it in a, a roadster. Put it in a roadster body. You know, maybe take. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe take the old S2000 body and update it for today's crash regulations, and throw this engine in it. That's it. 
that's all you have to do. Make it a convertible. Uh, maybe offer a coupe as well for people that don't like convertibles. I think it'll be a great sales hit. I know I definitely buy one. I don't know how I'll afford one, but you know I'll <laughs> I'll figure something out um, because if they come out with that kind of replacement, I'll be extremely happy. If they come out with like a hybrid kind of thing, which they keep saying, oh, the next S2000 is going to be a hybrid. If it comes out, that's all the rumors are saying. You know, I, you know, I had to see how it is. Um, if they use the hybrid system to kind of make it a four-wheel drive uh, car, that might be kind of cool, maybe. But you know, I'd have to take a look at the weight and how the car performs, and really, you know, how it looks and everything like that before I pass judgment. I really would prefer if they just took this drivetrain, made it into a rear-wheel drive, put a convertible on it. I'll buy that right away, right away. That'd be an awesome car, you know, price at around forty or fifty thousand dollars. That'd be a great car to buy, and I'd be all over that. All right, for some non-Honda news. Now uh, I've been following this along for a while now. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I am actually looking for a pickup truck. So a, uh, you know, I've been more interested in uh, pickup trucks lately than uh, than I used to be, and uh, I, I'm kind of a sucker for diesel trucks, but. Uh, the, the new Jeep Wrangler, a uh, very popular car here in the U.S., uh, is getting a facelift. It's getting actually a, a redesign, redesign, and uh, a few, there's a bit of news on that. So uh, you know they're coming out with a four-cylinder turbo engine. Uh, it may replace that six-cylinder it has, or it could be an option. I'm not sure. I hope it's an option. I think I'd pick up the six-cylinder instead of getting the, the, the turbocharged four-cylinder. I'm not sure yet. I'd have to look at the four-cylinder specs. But. Um, so the news is that they they may come out with a with a four cylinder turbocharged pickup truck Wrangler. I think that would be pretty sweet to own. I'm not sure what the what you know the specs would be. I'm not sure how it will drive. Um, I drove uh, my friend's Jeep Wrangler uh, recently in Iowa. I didn't have enough time with it to actually uh, do a full review on it, but I, I drove it. You know, I kind of drove. Well, he he also has uh, he upgraded well changed the wheels and tires and lifted the whole truck so I don't know if this affects you know definitely does affect the driving dynamics but when I was driving it around it kind of felt extremely vague uh, I felt like I was driving a an old 1960s pickup truck which to some people that might like that you know it's very vague steering you kind of you suggest where it goes and it kind of goes there um, and on the inside it's actually very cramped there's not much space but I can't deny it, it looks really, really cool. I mean, I'll take a look at the way it looks now. And uh, a pickup truck version of that, that would be pretty sweet. I don't know, I'd have to think about that. And uh, uh, some other news that's really interesting to me is that Hyundai, yeah, talk about Hyundai now, that uh, Korean brand is doing what I said should be done a long time ago. So I don't know if you guys uh, have been following me along for a while, but when I was buying the Type R, I was having a hard time trying to make deals with dealerships. I called 40 different de dealerships and uh, you know, basically all of them were kind of not nice to deal with and I started to get kind of nasty towards them. And actually, uh, I was the, one, the dealership I was meanest to, I was angriest to, was the one that I ended up buying it from because I was just directly and said, look, you guys are wasting my time for calling me for not the price that I want. I guess they felt bad or something because then they lowered the price to exactly what I wanted. It's like, hey, all right. But I've never been happy with dealership experience. You know, I, I'm talking, so Ray Price Honda is actually a good dealership as well, but even they have their, their flaws. You know, I, as, I, as I've said before, I was talking to the, the, the manager and you know he wants me to kind of help him to take pictures and videos of the cars, but you know, he's, he's busy, he doesn't know. So he's, you know, it, it, dealerships are tough to deal with that everyone knows this um, and you know a good dealership is a dealership that you kind of don't have to deal with much at all and uh, what Hyundai is doing is they're trying to do exactly that they're trying to kind of make their business model say uh, closer to Amazon's business model so you would go online you would look for the car that you want uh, you would pick the car that you want with the options and everything and uh, it would give you a price online you would fill out all the paperwork online you know financing all that good stuff and then after you were done with the paperwork and basically the car was ready to go then you'd go to the dealership 
pick up the car, they'd show you how to use the, the technology and things like that, and you're set to go. So I think that business model is really, really cool. And if Hyundai is successful in actually doing that, I'd really, I'd really commend them. And you know, it, it'd be a, a, another reason to take a look, closer look at Hyundai. All right, that does it for today's news. And uh, the next news segment will probably be in a week or two. You know, as soon as five, or it could be in a few days, depending on uh, what what the car industry uh, has. If something interesting pops up, I'll, uh, I'll do another news segment. Um, if you want to wait till the beer review, I'm going to start that now. All right. So uh, since this is the first one that I'm doing, uh, if you guys like it, I'll continue doing it. If you don't like it, I'll stop doing it. But uh, I do want to share with you guys my most favorite beer of all time, Trove's Mad Elf. This is the best tasting beer I've ever had. And uh, it's actually made in Pennsylvania. It's, uh, it's from Trove's Brewery out in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And uh, it is my most favorite brewery actually because they make Trove's Mad Elf. This is kind of a seasonal beer. Uh, it's made with cherries and honey, and uh, it's very strong. It's 11% uh, alcohol. Here's the label. I actually have a shirt, a Mad Elf shirt. Love it. Uh, but yeah, this is a really, really good beer. 11% alcohol, really good. Um, very tasty, basically like a post-dinner kind of beer or, you know, after a long day, you know, it's already nighttime, I'm not going to drive anymore. This is the kind of beer I like to take out and just kind of savor it and drink it. Actually, I drink these a lot when uh, when I'm editing. <laughs> and when I say a lot, I mean like once a month. Um, uh, while I'm editing, I'll take one out, I'll enjoy it while I edit some videos. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this news section, you know, some exciting things coming along. And uh, that, that about wraps it up, guys. So thank you for watching, as always. And uh, if I haven't, um, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.